Hi, my name is Max Collins from the University of Hong Kong, and today I'll be presenting on the Rocky 3D model and application to Saturn's moon Titan, developed by the Goddard Institute for Space Studies. This is in the very early stages, so I'll be covering some of the background for the research as well as what I'm currently working on. Uh, I'd like to give special thanks to Michael Way and Edgar Alamo at GISS for putting up with my incessant emailing. So before we dive in, I'll give a quick overview of Titan. Titan is one of the most Earth-like bodies in our solar system with a substantial nitrogen atmosphere containing about 5% methane and a surface pressure around 1.45 atmospheres. It's often characterized by this orange shade seen here produced through stratospheric organic photochemistry. It has an active weather system comparable to Earth's hydrological cycle with methane and ethane as the main condensable constituents and stable surface liquid with a temperature at the triple point of methane. So, Titan's circulation is dominated by a strong seasonal cycle driven by differential heating, creating a virtually global highly cell circulation. This circulation efficiently transports heat meridionally, homogenizing the temperature of the troposphere, meaning it's more sensitive to solar radiative imbalances than localized effects. Uh, this seasonal variation is caused by Saturn's ability with a period of 29.5 years. During northern summer, the high solar insulation produces atmospheric upwelling, causing methane cloud formation and precipitation through the rapid cooling of air parcels. So lower latitudes consistently receive more insulation than higher latitudes, with the net heating near the equator. In response to this radiative imbalance, the atmospheric circulation acts to transport heat towards the colder polar regions to reach an equilibrium, which results in low-latitude desert regions. Uh, Titan's atmospheric circulation acts to redistribute methane, trying low latitudes and delivering moisture to the poles. A uh, fundamental driver of this methane cycle is the humidity of the troposphere, and so the Hoyens gas chromatograph max spectrometer demonstrated the relative humidity to be 100% from 40 kilometers down to 8 kilometers, with a constant mixing ratio below, indicating a well-mixed and subsaturated lower troposphere. The depletion of methane through photolysis and subsequent hydrogen escape would severely limit the long-term methane cycle, and so it must be recharged through some mechanism. And methane would then cycle from pole to pole, residing at high latitudes and lakes. When equatorial humidity is high enough, convective storms at low latitudes are possible, playing a role in carving fluvial features. So today we'll be focusing mainly on the surface hydrocarbon reservoirs found in Titan's polar regions, including several large seas and many smaller lake features occurring at northern high latitudes. Radar measurements from Ligier and Marais, the second largest sea, suggest a liquid composition of nearly pure methane implying these lakes interact with the atmosphere and are linked to the weather and climate systems. Uh, Titan's south pole contains fewer lakes but still shows many lacustrine features, such as Ontario Lapis. So both polar regions uh, also appear to feature empty and partially filled basins, suggesting geologically recent surface exposures of liquid or saturated soils. Uh, erosional surface features suggestive of liquid flow, including channels and floodplains, have also been identified at many different latitudes, including the equatorial labyrinth regions. Uh, it's possible that at least some of these could be the remnants of a wetter, rainier past climate. So all of these lakes are restricted to latitudes poleward of 55 degrees, and cover 1.5% of Titan's observed surface. Dark Lake regions cover 10% of the area in the northern polar region, but only 0.4% in the southern. The seasonal cycle of polar precipitation is a sequence of wintertime mid-level tropospheric drying from descending dry air in the Hadley circulation, followed by warming and moistening of low-level air as the spring pole becomes illuminated and moistening of the mid-level troposphere by deep convection over the summer pole. Both Cassini and ground-based observations detected tropospheric cloud activity at southern mid-latitudes, as well as cloudiness over the pole. This suggests the presence of high moisture content, precipitation, and sustained surface liquids. Uh, this is a global mosaic of Titan surface brightness from Cassini Imaging Science Subsystem, or ISS, which shows the distribution of Titan's landforms. As you can see, persistent lacustrine features include filled lakes near the polar regions and dark areas. Some partially filled regions uh, remain radar dark relative to their surroundings, but show an increase in backscatter. That can't be explained by incidence angle variations using common scattering models. So this is still a topic of debate and could be the definition of organic debris or uh, complex porous nitriles, uh, periods of no wind, resulting in smooth features. So these are the major seas which contain 80% of the observed liquid-filled surface area and fill northern polar basins roughly 
between 50 and 100 degrees east. Northern regional variation can be explained by changes in observational geometry and con in contrast to southern ephemeral features. While much smaller lakes also ex exist elsewhere at Titan's North Pole, these primary large features dominate and coincide with some of Titan's large-scale topographic depression. Um, this is a SAR mosaic of Titan's South Polar region from 90 to 55 degrees south for September 2005 through January 2010. The three areas which include ephemeral features are outlined in red. Titan's South Polar region was in summer during this time and expected to be in a state of volatile evaporation. These ephemeral lakes are uh, found virtually only in the southern region and may be due to surface changes including liquid evaporation, infiltration, freezing, wave activity, and cryovolcanism. Ephemeral feature loss rates are also consistent with predominantly methane composition. Uh, three classes of lakes have been identified, empty lakes, uh, partially filled lakes, and dark or liquid filled lakes based on the microwave reflectivity of site Titan's surface. Using the normalized backscatter cross-section, which is a non-dimensional quantity that describes received radar power as compared to an isotropically scattering surface. Uh, this figure shows an equidistant cylindrical projection of Ontario Lacus, which is the largest lake in the southern region. The lake border from the 2005 ISS image is shown in cyan, while the 2009 SAR border is blue. Uh, figure A in, is an ISS image attained in uh, June 2005, and the ISS shoreline is defined by following a constant contour of relative brightness, for reference to a local offshore pixel intensity. Figure B is a SAR image obtained in June uh, and July 2009. The altimetry shows a smooth and specular surface with 20 kilometers recession of the southern shoreline between the ISS and radar images. A near shore bathymetry map was derived in Hayes et al., suggesting an average depth change of 4 meters consistent with an average loss rate of 1 meter during the four years between observations. The tide uh, is not a dominant contributor to the observed change in depth as there are no variations in the magnitude with the north-south distance from the center of mass. And if the main process of depth changes evaporation, the lake would have to contain a high methane fraction as ethane would impede methane evaporation if well mixed. So, shoreline and surface changes indicate local hydraulic connectivity combined with weather patterns and low-level humidity measurements imply methane reservoirs in excess of observed surface liquids. Titan's hydroclimate appears to be especially driven by large-scale topography, seen through active drainage, erosional modification, saturated sediments, and seemingly stable polar lacustrine features. Uh, this evidence suggests that the presence of subsurface methane in contact with global climate system. This may be through a continuous connected methane table intersecting with the surface expressed through polar lakes and seas. The atmosphere deposits methane into the low latitudes to be infiltrated, while surface and subsurface transport routes methane into high latitude basins, which then feed the atmospheric moisture. Uh, this subsurface transport occurs through lateral flow of fluid and aquifers, dominantly through fractures and depending on active aquifer thickness, hydraulic conductivity, porosity, and the hydraulic gradient. Uh, this is the distribution of surface liquid methane averaged over the final 20 Titan years of each simulation by Falk et al. The hydraulic conductivity K of the surface is shown for each case and corresponds to different permeabilities. Subsurface transport is dependent on hydraulic conductivity, which describes the ability of liquid to flow through pore space and depends on the permeability of the porous medium, liquid density, gravity, and dynamic viscosity. Soil types are currently poorly constrained, and flow is modeled using methane as a primary constituent. So results suggest a subsurface methane reservoir more massive than the observed seas interacting with the atmosphere and participating in the methane cycle. Uh, model results imply this unobserved methane reservoir participates in Titan's methane cycle, thus modeled with a hydraulic conductivity of 5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Um, although this still does not explain the distribution of small lakes, which may be due to the influence of topography or regional surface variation on the atmosphere. Uh, the model I'm currently using is the resolving orbital and climate keys of Earth and extraterrestrial environments with dynamics, uh, it's a three-dimensional GCM developed at the GISS for modeling extraterrestrial uh, planets. And it's an ongoing effort to handle a broad range of atmospheric conditions as well as diverse oceans, land distributions and topographies. So this is just a basic overview of the land hydrology 
uh, in Rocky 3D, and I'm currently working to adapt this to tighten landscape and climate through parameterization of constants such as emissivity, albedo, thermodynamics, and soil properties to accurately represent subsurface transport through alconifers, or what we can infer about uh, future work may include modeling the influence of changing orbital forcing on the asymmetry of tight surface uh, and subsurface flow, including topographic influence, spatially dependent soil parameters, and surface evolution. And models such as these can help constrain key properties and processes uh, useful in preparation for future in situ uh, exploration of Titans, such as with NASA's Dragonfly mission. Thank you for listening to my talk.